Hi folks, uh, so what we're going to be doing today guys is a topic of transformation geometry and specifically we're going to be working on rotations part of transformation geometry. So uh, in other questions that we've done on rotations guys, often we've been given a rotation point and uh, tools to either rotate an object about a point uh, 60 degrees clockwise or clockwise or anti-clockwise or so forth or a different angle, okay? Um, but another one that often comes up guys is where you're actually not given the angle but you're given a rotation point and you're also given a line okay and the object obviously so we can see here we have the object a b c d simple rectangle okay and we have a line r m okay so often in the question you might be asked it could say and these often come up actually in short answer questions in the section a as well uh, of the paper so uh, often you can be asked uh, to rotate the object a b c d okay the rectangle a b c d uh, about the point R until the vertex A hits the line RM. Okay, so that's going to be our guide. So what we want to do today is we're going to rotate this object about the point R until the vertex A, the vertex A, comes and meets the line RM. So basically A is going to be our guide point. These aren't too tricky, but what you have to do is you just have to basically use the geometry of your object to finish the question. So it says rotate the object about the uh, about the point R until the point A reaches or the vertex A uh, reaches the line R M. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take our compass, put it on R, take the radius from R to A, and we're going to swing an arc until it meets the line R M. Now A has basically rotated about R and it has stops until it meets meets the line R uh, R M. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the rest of the points. Okay, so let's say I take, I'll start with this one first of all actually. I'm just going to take the distance now from R to B, so that's my radius. I'm going to swing an arc. Okay, now it doesn't tell us that B has to meet the line RM. Okay, so, and we don't know this angle here. Now you could actually measure it if you wanted, but that's not the case. Okay, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the distance from A to B, because that hasn't changed. And it won't change over here and we know where the location of a is or a1 now so if we take the distance from a to b like this okay just make sure it's a whole fully accurate there that distance there i can now come to where a1 is and scribe an arc through the radius rb and you can see where those two arcs crossed each other down here where the two arcs crossed each other that point right there now is b1 okay so I can connect those up. That's A1 to B1 sorted. And what I want to do now, at this point then, is I want to locate, I'll do D in this case. I'll work back to C then. Okay, so take the distance from R to D. That distance there. Swing an arc. And you'd have to imagine D is going to be somewhere out here. It's going to be somewhere there possibly okay and now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take the distance from A to D that distance there come to A1 swing an arc and as you can see we have now found D1 okay at this point what I would usually do in a class guys is I would always create a perpendicular angle okay so I'm going to set up my just 30 60 there on the line a1 to b1 move it slightly and then just make sure it should be providing i didn't move too much there it should be perpendicular yeah quite happy with that okay so it's a1 to d1 and now the very very last one okay i could have just connected it up but i want to make sure that they are perpendicular like they are over here so the last one then i'm going to take the distance from r to c Rotate it about, and if, as you can imagine, C is going to be somewhere down here. Now, there's two ways I could do this. I could either take the distance from D to C like this. I could come to D here, mark it off. That should be C1. I could have also have gone to B, taking the distance from, you can see here, B to C. Show a mark right there, B to C gone to B1 and it should go in through the same point it's close enough okay and then I could have also now this would be an awkward one but I could have done the diagonal from A to C 
and it could have gone from A1, as you can see there, but that one wouldn't have worked out as great. Okay, so we can see there now we have uh, found, sorry, C1. So I'm going to join A1 to D1. I know it should be parallel with that. I'm happy with that there. Okay, and then it should be perpendicular. I'm happy with that as well. Okay, just make sure. They should be all parallel to one another. And they are. Okay, now don't worry about the line RM, I know what's going through it, that is just for uh, demonstration purposes. So what we did there guys was, we rotated the object here, ABCD, about the point R until the vertex A hits the line RM, okay? And then we used the geometry of the rest of the object to locate the rest of the points once we had them rotated about, okay? Uh, comes up uh, quite often in a higher level paper. Uh, can come up in the long answer question on part B of the paper or in the short answer questions in part A. Okay, hope you found that useful.